Hi, I'm Martin Eccles from AHDB. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Um, I've got a short video for you today, looking at some different ways of how we can utilise some different cuts from across beef, lamb and pork carcasses. We have some, um, some offals as well, so we're going to just touch into a bit of how we can utilise some offals. With the beef, we're going to look at doing some, uh, what we we'll call a fake away, so effectively making, creating a, um, a takeaway menu, but creating it at home so it can be, be eaten at home. With the pork, we're going to look at doing some, utilising some of the pork loin. And then with the lamb, we're going to make a lamb kofta, again, on the fake away type of thing. So it's something creating that at home. And then just look at different ways of how we can actually utilise some of the offals actually incorporate that into some of the meals that we actually uh, are eating and therefore getting all the nutrients that we do get from offals. So we're going to move on now and we'll start on with the beef. So as I said we are going to start off on the beef and we're going to look at doing a um, product that is suitable for um, a taco so like a bit of a, a Mexican style um, meal. We've got some different cuts of beef that we can actually utilise in this. But what I actually wanted to just talk to you about today was um, we had some skirt beefs. <clears throat> so the skirt beef comes from, 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 from the flank of the animal, so like round from, from the stomach area. And we have different types of, of actual skirt. They're all classed as skirt, but they are a different muscle. So we have this one here, which is more of an inner, what we call like the inner skirt. We have this one here, which is a bavet skirt. And then we have the third one here, which is a goose skirt. What I'd like to just try and show to you is that um, each of these cuts, the grain is running this way. And when we actually go to produce um, something for the taco, what we do need to do is to cut it and slice it across the grain. Not with the grain, across it. This, what we do, the reason is for this is that actually when we come to actually eat it, it eats a little bit tenderer. So we'll look at the, the, the inner skirt first. So this is quite a long skirt. As you can see, it has like a, a little bit of membrane on the inside, a little bit of, uh, of, of fat that sits on this here. You can buy these products um, from a butcher's shop. Some of the multiple retailers will also stock these, but it may not be so much of, of, of being classed as inner bet or goose it might just become under the term skirt again you can see with this one here it's longer and thinner and the grains are running this way if you look at the bavette the bavette is a, a thicker a thicker muscle traditionally um, utilized in France for steak frites and again cut um, thin across the grain and then the, uh, the, the remaining one is the goose skirt. What I would like to just do, we'll just put them there just to give you some sort of ideas of how we can actually cut it. So as again, we said trim it across, cut it across the grain. So as we can see, it actually starts to break down. So it's a little bit of, a, we can see it that way, eating that way, it will be eat more tender. Cut it thin because of like for the actual time that's going to be cooked into thin slices. Now, these can either be cooked um, in whole piece, or we can actually turn this way and just make them into a little smaller, so that's actually when it's cooking, it's a smaller piece. So when we come to put it into the taco, again, it's, it's not all the facing, you know, thing. we're not getting a long piece of meat that's, um, that doesn't eat just as well as it perhaps it should do, because through the sheer size of it. But that's just to give you an idea on the visual of the goose skirt again don't need a great deal in a taco um, probably a maximum of, of, a, of a couple of ounces would suffice into, um, into into a single taco if we look at the the bavette like I said, i've just sliced it in half like this i would suggest that if you're going to cut this if you actually cut it into a smaller piece like this and then cut it across the grain before you actually before you actually cook it. It just makes it easier. Again, you can see how the, the actual meat 
pull the intender, breaks down like that there. Just take some slices. So that's your the vet skirt, and then if we look um, again as I did with with the vet with the inner skirt, I would cut it, cut it into a piece, take a section. So when you actually go on, if you have if you are if you do have a butcher's that close to you that you can get, so you can actually buy it in the smaller piece. But again, it just takes that bit of work out before in the uh, <coughs> for your students in, in their lesson. Cut it thin. I would always recommend on cutting it thin because it cooks quicker and it, it, it just makes it easier in the in the taco. Again, if you wanted to use this for, for heaters, it would do it would work the same. So there we have three different types of skirt meat. So we had we had the, 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 the goose skirt, we had the bavette, and then we had the inner skirt. Um, if you are you aren't you don't have a, a butcher's shop or a retailer close by that can't supply you with the skirt, there are alternatives, it's not skirt, but what you can buy is um, Thin cut steaks. Thin cut steaks um, come from different cuts on the animal. So we're looking at this one just by the, looking at the, at the shape of it. This this one has, has come from a silver side. And what they have done is that they have cut it thin. Um, if we just open these up. So with this here, we have got thin cut steaks. Um, quite lean, so you know we're not. There's not like excessive, any excessive amounts of fat on them. These have got like quite a nice bit of marbling that's going with them. Um, from the from the back here, these are 21 day aged, so mat been matured for 21 days. So again, should they be a, a, a nice eating quality. With these, I would recommend you take this top layer of fat away. Just take it away, with a little just like a little bit of waste. You take that away. And then, as we did with 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 the uh, with the skirts, is to just cut them thin. These ideal, like I said, for for tacos. If you want to use them for stir fries, for heaters, these will, you know, these will be ideal in that sort of cooking. Recommended flavors. We will um, at the end. We will um, list up some different recipes that we recommend. So we do have one for. For, for, for the, the bavette, for the skirt meat, but like using for tacos. Um, I would recommend putting just like, um, store cupboard seasonings with these. So if we talk about store cupboard seasonings, easy ones that are readily available. Um, bit of salt, obviously just need to monitor the amount of salt that we put in things. Um, cumin powder, most people will have some cumin powder of some sorts in, in their store cupboards. And a bit of uh, coriander if people want to put a bit of chili in it that's their just that's their uh, option you can buy steaks that are pre-marinated um, again these will it's just the same cut of meat it's the same steaks but obviously when you're buying something that is pre-marinated that's had an added seasoning we do need to be aware of um, sugar levels, salt, etc. The fats, unsaturated fats, and they will be displayed on the on the on the label. Okay, so that is the uh, the beef cuts that we were looking at. And what I uh, what I wanted to move on to next was um, onto some pork. So what I've actually got here is a piece of pork loin um, and what I want to do is, this one I've actually got the rind on but I want to take the rind off and then I'm going to cut a steak and I want to make a little bit of a pocket in it that then we can fill with um, a, a filling of our choice, whether that be um, a ratatouille style, so a mixture of peppers, onions, a bit of tomato that can go in there with a bit of garlic. Um, I personally quite enjoy um, a mushroom sauce, so just a basic white sauce with mushrooms, so just flour, margarine, um, again we can use the lighter margarines, 
and then a bit of milk. Buying it like this, um, <clears throat> when I went into the, into, the, into the retailer to buy this, it's quite significant the difference in price from buying a product that is like this in a piece and buying an actual steak that's actually um, pre-cooked. I actually noticed there was a difference of three or four pounds a kilo difference from buying it like this as opposed to buying it uh, as a pre-cooked steak. There is a bit more work to be done in this one if we do buy something like this. So like I said, this has the rind on it. So what I want to do is I want to take that rind off. And if we put it with the rind side down, if we get our knife and then we just look gently to where, where the rind starts and we bring our knife in and just gently cut and lift the actual meat as we're going. And then just gentle strokes coming across like that where the fat is. Nice and easy, gently lift. So we've got, we've got the meat in our hands and it's lifting it and then just gradually follow it along. Ideally, we want to keep this all white and we don't want to cut into the actual uh, the meat on that side of it. So we follow the knife across, just gently until it eventually it runs out. And then we can just take so the rind comes off with the bump paste like that. Put that to one side. So we have the port line. I can tell by looking at here by this little piece here, round here, that this is from the shoulder end. And then this one is coming down more into the lumbar section, so in towards the hind of the animal. What the idea is that we will cut a steak, which is probably twice the thickness that you will buy if you're buying a single packet of steaks. And the reason for that is, is because I want to make a pocket in the middle that we can put our filling in. When you're doing this, I would always recommend that you make the pocket before you put it. It's just not so much easier rather than trying to hold it upright. So we, we look at where the iron muscle is, so just this piece here. And then we, what we want to do is just make a little incision. Okay. So we open it up and we can see that we made, we haven't gone through, we haven't gone through the bottom because we don't want our filling to run out. We then look at it and then again cut it the same thickness as the first one where we made the split and we'll open it up. So we have a port line steak. Now, if we want to just to extend that a little bit, we can do. We can open it up and maybe if we need to go a little bit deeper, but it's far easier to do it this way than it is to do it rather than as a full one and then trying to do it you know we're starting to cut towards ourselves and that's what we don't want so we've made a pocket like i said i quite enjoy um a, a mushroom sauce a white mushroom sauce that will go in it if people want to experiment with, with a with an alternative filling then that's up to them you know there's, there's no wrong way about doing this trial and error is, is a good way to do it once you put your filling in what I would recommend to doing is just to put a little bit of a couple of skewers or cocktail sticks as I've used here just so it holds that together. If you're going to do um, a couple we will just take another steak off we'll not split it but just if you're going to do something like that what you could actually do is you could actually just join them bit this way just just so that they hold each other when we actually go to cook it so we can lean them against each other and they stay upright when we're in the cooking process. Um, with anything I would recommend, if you have um, a, a meat probe or a meat, a meat thermometer, great asset to, to anybody's kitchen. I live and die by um, using a, a meat probe. I use it constantly. So that is the, 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 the pork parcels or a port line steak which is as, as a parcel so we're going to put that that season into it. Let's move this to one side. <coughs> what um we're going to move on to uh, some lamb. So we talked about making a lamb kofta. So what I have here is some minced lamb. What I want to just make you aware of, you can buy this in, in retailing, in multiple retailing shops, or you can buy it in the butcher's shops. 
This one here states on it the fact that it has 20% fat. So people will talk about visual lean, so VL, um, and you'll see it more prominent on beef mints, where you will have extra lean, 5% fat, 15% fat, 20% fat. So that what that actually means is that 80% is red lean meat, 20% is fat. I would always go, if, you, if it is possible, get in a minimum of 10% fat. It's just better that way. It's a better product when you come to eat it. From butcher's shop, you'll probably get a higher lean content, so the, the VL will probably be higher, but this is the one that is in the, in the retail shops. And it states that it's 20% fat, but that is the minimum that it can be. That is the maximum that it can be 20% fat. So more often than not, that the threshold is 20%. It will actually probably be a bit leaner. But always be aware that of that when you're looking for some products. You will find that the red meat, the, the, lean, the one that's less fat in, will be probably a little bit more expensive. So what I want to do here is just to just open this up. And uh, we want to make some lamb cofters. So we'll open up the packet. Okay, that just goes in. Make sure you take that off. Won't be the first time I've left that on. So that, that goes away. When making a kofta, something that's going to go on to um, a skewer or something like that, what we need to do is we need to work the meat and get the proteins going and stuff like that because it tend, it, that is a natural way of, of binding. Um, what I've actually got here is just to make the kofta is uh, I've got a little bit of salt, obviously got to monitor salt levels and things like that. Um, teaspoon and a half of uh, cumin powder, teaspoon of um, ground cumin, ground cumin, and cumin. So we'll add them to it. We'll just gently start these going. So we'll start to work the meat. Get those proteins going up there. I've got some, some onions. I like, to, I like to put onions with it. Not everybody does. But when I do put the onions in, what I will do is I will soften them first. So I've actually um, gently, on, on a low heat, just fried these just in a little bit of oil. Um, I let them go cool and then we'll put them in as well. I just find that it just takes that edge off the onion when we cook it. Then, we need to just work it into the into the product. Okay, so it's about getting your hands in, mixing the the, uh, the seasonings, the onions, getting them really in, and getting them going. You can feel with your hands when it starts to really work together or bind together. It doesn't take long; a few minutes doing this. So we have that, so we've, we've worked that, so we've got the proteins going in that there. Then get a scale and then decide on what size of a portion you're going to have. I would recommend around, around 100 grams. Is an ample um, raw weight, I think recommend, recommended um, amount is between 100 and 120 but I generally go for about 100 because that's I find that to be enough. We take it and again we mould it, start to make it into a sausage style shape, move it wrong, get a skewer and then just gently push that through. This, there's different types of skewers you can buy, the, the, just the standard straight ones are fine. These are just some that I have for work that I've like a bit of a paddle on. So there we have um, a simple lamb crafter made out of uh, aluminium lamb. With these, you want to serve them in a, in a pit of bread, so effectively like you get from um, a takeaway. Make a simple uh, bit of lettuce tatsiki with it, something like that, ideal. So that is um, the lamb. The, um, the last one we put on to actually go on was offals. Um, and what we have 
what I've actually brought here, what I've actually got here is we've got some from different types of livers and we've got some lamb's kidneys. Again, butcher's shops, um, farm shops, retail will all provide, uh, you can buy a certain packets of liver. You, you are determined, more determined on the size of the packet that you buy from um, a retailer because it will be nice. Bringing people into um, livers, they are different, lamb's liver and pig's liver, um, and you can buy ox and calf livers again, but that's something that you're going to find in a more specific type of shop, more like the fact that you butcher's shops. Lamb's livers um, is a milder flavour, isn't quite as strong as, as a pig's liver. Um, and obviously, if you for, for religious reasons, if you, if you don't eat pork, then obviously that's lamb's liver. Um, we will put some um, menus, menus, recipes up at the end um, to try and encourage people to actually try and eat liver, but just because of the so the, the nutrient rich products, the stuff they're so good for us, and it's something that we don't really eat a great deal of. These are just to give you some sort of idea. This is a, a slice of, of lamb's liver. So you can tell lamb's liver has, has, a, has a finer texture than, than, than a pig's liver as well. When I talked about the, um, the coarse grain on the skirt earlier on, you do find that pig's liver has that type of thing. So it, lamb's liver tends to be a little bit tenderer um, and it, it is a milder flavor. The one that the, the actual recipe that, we, that we've put up at the end of it um, actually shows as, as having as, as a full slice of liver, we flour it, we breadcrumb it, and then we shell off right for, for a few minutes. Sometimes liver is something um, you need to, to have a few times to start really getting to get your taste, to get that understanding of your body, to understand that, that flavour profile <clears throat> of something that we're going to eat. And, and really, it's to get away from. The actual appearance and the texture when we're actually feeling liver like that. Some ways, maybe an easier way to bring people in to actually um, introduce them into liver, maybe to actually cut it smaller, maybe even dice it, and then put it with um, another food, another protein. Um, whether we make like a, a, a casserole with it, we're all looking at some different flavours. So we add some onions, we have a nice gravy, and we have maybe some sausages. So we're actually, we're mixing those sort of um, flavours in with it and the textures, but we're getting the we're getting the benefits from actually eating the offal. So I've just put that into thin slices. Again, we could do these just as as, as a little quick stir fry, or we can actually cut them smaller. So we're not getting that that texture, that 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 profile of it, and then once we start getting more accustomed to actually the flavours and the textures, then we start to actually enjoy it more. Um, it's that with a few things that you know we can say the same for olives, we can say the same for some blue cheeses. It's about acquiring the flavour and the taste. Beneficially wise, we don't eat enough liver. It's relatively inexpensive um, product. If we look at both of these here, we've got an actual pound of, of 450, 470 grams of liver, 482 grams of liver, one pound eight, one pound 65. Um, if we were buying the equivalent in a beef product, the cheapest one is mince, we will be at four or five pounds. And this is so much better for you, okay? So if we start looking at uh, the way that the the, the economy and things are going now, we should be eating more of these. Not only are they they're really, really good for us, they're also considerably cheaper. Kidneys, this is a lamb's kidney. Um, these generally will be covered in fat, so the, in, with the internal fat which is surrounds it within the animal. Um, the fat needs to be taken off. There is a, a membrane, a skin that sits across the outside. Again, that needs to come off. What I would recommend, um, you either ask your butcher to do this, or if you're buying them from a, a retailer, then what I would suggest is that you lie the kidney fat like that, gently bring your knife in to split the kidney, and then inside, 
there is what we call the core, which is a um, little bit of fat and where the pipes are. And when we split it like this, we can actually remove that. Okay. So this again, we're just removing something that might just not just eat as, as nice as perhaps, perhaps we could. Just gently bring it away from that side and then the same on the other. Take that away. And then there we have the kidney. These can be fried just as they are. Um, add, add, add some flavours to them, add, add a bit of garlic, add a bit of chilli if you want that type of thing. We can dice them small, we can add them to a casserole. Again, so we're getting the benefits from this product, but actually when we dice it nice and small, put it with something else, um, it become, people will tend to eat it a little bit more and they don't really get the, the full on flavour of it until they once they become accustomed to it, then they begin to like it, then they'll venture onto something a bit stronger maybe. So that's just a short video of some alternative cuts. I hope you found it beneficial. Um, I have said that we will add some uh, some links towards the end for some recipes and we also have some um, some links as part of an education program that the ASDP run which I think is beneficial to anybody whether that be the actual lecturer, the teacher, the student, somebody wanting to enter into the meat industry but wants to have a little bit of background before they get in there. This is all free to use um, from the ASD webpage and it's a digital um, format so you can do it at your own leisure on your own uh, laptop at home. Thank you for watching we will be around for questions afterwards and thank you very much. Bye bye.